Hi, this is Becky with Icing on Top Becky's Cake, and today I am going to show you how to fill and stack a wedding cake. And then you can also do anything you want with it, like add these silk flowers. So this was a very simple cake, because all it was was semi-naked, and it had silk flowers on, and then a whole bunch of cupcakes. So this was a really nice order to have. But a lot of people like these semi-naked cakes, because they're very elegant and some people don't like as much buttercream. So first things, have to have a completely level cake to do this. Now I've shown you in another video how to get your cakes to easily release from their pan and how to level them using a cake leveler. So I won't repeat that so I don't bore you too much here. But I will put a link later in the details so that you have that one if you need that one. But anyway, our foundation is super important. We want it to be completely level because if it's not level, you're going to get it slightly slanted all the way and then it's not going to be a perfectly even cake. So every single slice of cake is the exact same size and completely leveled. And before I put my filling on, I want to give it a thin layer of buttercream. And the buttercream is um, going to be just so that people don't get just a slice of cake with filling. You want to have a little bit of buttercream there because I don't make my fillings super sweet. I make these homemade fillings with fresh fruit, but I don't make them super sweet because I know I'm going to be putting them on a buttercream cake usually. And so I'm just going to put a very thin layer of buttercream before I add the dam of buttercream around the edges and then I'm going to add the filling. And if you want to know how to make your own homemade filling, it's actually really simple. Um, just check out my blueberry filling recipe and you can substitute the blueberries for raspberries, blackberries, um, strawberries, all different kinds of fruit. But uh, it's just really simple and it's yummy. Now I've put some buttercream into a piping bag and snipped off the end so that I have uh, a little hole here and then I can pipe a dam all the way around the edge. And we want to make sure that that is lined up right with the edge and if it overhangs a little bit that's okay because we will be scrape, scraping around the cake but we've got to make sure that it reaches all the way to the edge here and the consistency of your buttercream is also important so mine's a stiffer buttercream it's the mock american buttercream that i use on all my cakes it's a lovely wedding cake buttercream and I also use it to do lots of piping. Um, it's my absolute favorite buttercream and it's great for many things. Now I got my filling in a piping bag as well and I'm just gonna squeeze that right into the center of all that. But I wanna make sure that when I fill the middle of my cake, I do not fill it any higher than my buttercream dam because otherwise it's gonna ooze over the sides of your cake. because I'm going to use my offset spatula to just smooth that uh, filling all in place and if there's any excess I'll kind of just scoop it off there because I don't want it to be any higher than that buttercream dam. And then we'll take our next layer of cake after that's all done and when we put it on, I'm gonna put it on the, the side that I've trimmed off, I'm gonna place that side down. And that just uh, makes it a lot easier because then the next layer I'll be piping right on top of that and it's a lot easier to frost if you have that facing down towards your filling. Then I'm gonna get out my level that I've set aside for my cake use. So I'm gonna put my level on here because I wanna make sure that this is completely level before I frost it and put it in the fridge and get it ready for the next layers to do. So we're just gonna set it right in the center and then press down until that little bubble goes right in the center. And then I'm gonna turn it also in the other direction and make sure that it's level on both sides. Again, the most important thing in this stage is to make sure that all of your cake is level. So that way when you're all done, you're gonna have a perfectly level straight cake. Now 
Now that it's been leveled, we're just gonna use our offset spatula to smooth that excess icing off and make sure that it's all locked in place and that nothing is gonna be oozing out later because this is a semi-naked cake, so anything is gonna show if something's gonna leak. So you wanna make sure everything is sealed and then we're gonna put on some icing and scrape it off and show you how to do the semi-naked cake. And now I'm just gonna use my bench scraper to first see and make sure that everything is straight. So the bench scraper, make sure you put it straight against your cake board and you should have a perfect 90 degree angle all the way around your cake. And then we can put the frosting on. So using uh, my large quick icer tip, this is a wonderful tip for getting icing on your cake quickly. I'm gonna start at the top and do the top first. And I have all my buttercream in there, so I'm gonna pipe it all around the top and then, yep, we're gonna scrape it right off because this is a semi-naked cake. But um, you've seen my other tutorials on how to frost it and everything, a normal cake. But um, this is actually the easiest because it doesn't take as long to get smooth as it would a regular iced cake. So that's why I always say this is the beginner's uh, cake or the easy kind of cake because all you have to do is put all the icing on and take it off without digging into the crumbs. <laughs> and so one of the best ways also is to make sure that your cakes are chilled when you do this. I chill them um, in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes, make sure that they're just fully chilled and then they're a lot less crummy when you do it that way. Here's my offset spatula and I'm just gonna scrape that around and then scrape it right off. And then we're gonna get out our quick icer tip again with our buttercream and starting at the very bottom of our cake, we're going to quickly pipe around one, one full time that way. And then we're gonna pipe above it another full time all the way around our cake. Then I'm gonna use my uh, offset spatula again to just press the buttercream into the cake before I scrape it off. And that way I make sure that the buttercream is fully into all the little crevices before scraping it off. That way you will really see the result once you scrape it off of the buttercream that you have left behind. Then using our bench scraper, we're just gonna go ahead and scrape that off. I'm pulling it towards me not at a full uh, angle, but slightly angled away from me as I kind of press it in and pull it at the same time. Then I'm gonna put my utensils, both of the bench scraper and the offset spatula, in a pot of boiling water that I have set on the side. So every time you see me take a break, it's to dip it in the hot boiling water. Then I wipe it with um, my paper towel and then I scrape again. And that hot water just helps uh, get out some of those bubbles and smooth it a lot better uh, but you don't want the water actually on the cake so that's why you wipe it each time. So now I'll take my offset spatula and I'm also going to wipe with a paper towel because it was also in the hot boiling water and uh, when I use this I'm going to come in at an angle so it's coming in at an angle and pulling it in towards the center and then I'm going to wipe that and then make sure I wipe it off again with my paper towel because it was in the hot water and then press it in at an angle and pull it in towards the center.
Now, one of the most important steps on a cake is support. And so the support I'm using are bubble tea straws. You can also use wooden dowels, but bubble tea are very easy to use and easy to trim to get them all the same length. And also I find that the weight distribution of how wide the bubble teas are, this really helps the cake. <laughs> it works out really good for me. But you use the ones that you think will work best for you. I'm gonna mark the line here and I'm marking it. I have uh, my food safe paintbrush here and I just put a little bit of food dye on it and I'm just gonna mark that and then pull it off. You can also use a toothpick or whatever, but just put a little bit of food dye on it and use that as your marker and then pull this out. And that way you can measure it up against the other bubble tea straws and mark them all and then cut them and then check to make sure they're all the same length. And that really makes it super simple. And you can also tell on the top of my cake, you'd see a little circle that I've drawn with a toothpick. And what I did was I used the six inch circle and I put it on top of my eight inch cake and then drew around that so that I have it already marked off where my cake is gonna be going. And as long as I know where my cake is going, I'll know around where I wanna put these. So I'm making sure they're all the same size and then I can put them in. And these are really important. You want them to rest right in line with the top of your buttercream because and that's especially important when you have a thicker layer of buttercream because if you stack the cake it's going to press that buttercream down and it's going to bulge out the sides if you don't have your supports high enough so since i have a six inch take cake on top of the eight inch cake i'm going to have five supports in it this time. So I always do about one less compared to the inch of the cake above it. Then we can take out the six inch cake that we have had chilled in the fridge for about 30 minutes. And I've put on another board so any of the uh, ones above it. It's going to have a board that is the exact same size as the cake itself. And then I'm going to have a slightly larger board that I have it just rest on while it's in the fridge. And I dig my bench scraper right under that all the way around and I apply a little bit of buttercream to the cake that I'm going to be putting it on to act as the glue. And so once I get the bunch scraper all the way around the cake that's been in the fridge, I'm just going to lift that off with my bench scraper and since it's been chilled in the fridge if I touch it it's not the end of the world but we will have to clean up a little bit but then we're gonna get it right exactly where we want it and sometimes if it's a larger cake that I'm moving I use the bench scraper on one side and my offset spatula on the other side and then I stick it on like that and it might also be helpful if you don't have it on your turntable at this time like I did <laughs> I'm going to use my bench scraper to put it in place exactly where I want it. And then we can do the next layer, which is also chilled in the fridge. I'm just going to do some touch-ups here with my offset spatula. And then I'm just going to put a little buttercream on top of that 6-inch cake. And I'm going to take out my little 4-inch cake, which is adorable. And I'm going to just stick uh, my bench scraper right under that. And the four inch cake also has a cake board the size of the four inch that it's on. And this other cake board, which is the one that I used just to set it in the fridge. And I'm gonna pick that up like that. And so you can kind of see the cardboard right there. And you need that cardboard because you do not want the cake resting on your supports. You want it resting on your cardboard. Otherwise, it'll just come through yeah, each of the cakes, how it goes is you're gonna have support, those smoothie straws with the cardboard resting on it. And that's what all of them rest on. No cake uh, tier should be resting on the other cake tier. It's the cardboard cake circle that rests on those supports. And you can even push it down with your hands pretty hard and it should not press your cake or have your, your filling ooze out the sides because all the supports you've put in place now the final support. This is the stabilizer. This is the thing that holds it all together, all three tiers. There is a hole 
in each of the cake circles when you are putting together your tiers. Each of these, except for the bottom one, is gonna have a little hole in the middle of your cake circles ahead of time. And um, so when you get out your big wooden dowel, or it's a large skewer in this case because there's a little sharp edge, which that sharp edge will come into play here. But um, if it was an even larger cake, you would want a thicker dowel. But because of the size of my cake, we're just using a large skewer. And that's very important because it's gonna hold all three layers together. So we're gonna pierce it through all three layers and then at the very end, I'm going to press it using another dowel just on the very top of it to press it further. You can use a screwdriver or something else if you want, but we want to press it a little farther into your cake so that it actually pierces your cake drum. And that's gonna really keep it steady and not moving around. Now we're gonna do touch-ups with our buttercream because as you see, I've got, had my fingers in a couple of spots and so now we wanna to touch up and we're just gonna pipe on a little buttercream there and smooth it out. Then I have a writing tip that I have. It's probably about a size five writing tip in my buttercream and what I'm gonna do is between each of these tiers. You see there's a little gap there. We want it to be seamless, so I'm gonna pipe right in between that gap all the way around, and then I'm just gonna gently smooth it so you can't even see that it was there. So that is gonna be the final touch. And then you can add whatever kind of flowers or design you want to your cake. We just did silk flowers to the actual cake, and then I piped a like 200 cupcakes, <laughs> which were a lot of fun. If you want to see how to do these sunflower ones, you can check out my tutorial on piping a buttercream sunflower on a cupcake. And then there's these simple swirled ones. And you can check out the, that tutorial um, that's called How to Pipe a Fancy Cupcake Easily. It's a rosette swirl and it's really easy. I use the 1B tip for those. And um, that's so half of those are filled and half aren't. And so those are a really yummy way to go. So here is our three-tier semi-naked cake. And um, if you want the buttercream recipe, that is also on my channel. And so are how to make fillings and stuff. So uh, yeah, this one, you know, very simplistic, but I, it also has that elegant look that a lot of people like, which I think is why it's so popular. But um, Thanks for watching today and please subscribe to my channel.